Hi guys, it's Drew here. I oh, just had to check if I put my sound on. A bit floaty today, but it's coming up to the full moon, so that makes sense. Um, and I'm here today to talk to you guys about week two with the CMP course and how that went. So week two, we were focusing on the uh, waxing moon. And I think the waxing moon with the new moon is definitely one of my most, like, prominent potent weeks um we're moving like i said we're moving into the full moon and with the full moon energy for me like a couple of days before the full moon i end up getting incredibly tired so like probably the last two days of this week i've been sleeping non-stop like i'll be able be awake for a couple of hours and sleep and sleep and sleep that's just very natural for me and so um heads up next week we're going into the full moon week with the course and I'm going to be doing some shadow work because full moon for me is always about release and um, I did put a video up about releasing my fears of dancing because that's something that I've been wanting to do for a while so you can check that out uh, but uh, yeah this the, the full moon coming is a, a, about um, releasing and looking at the shadows that have come up and some shadows have come up this week so it's been really interesting um, I haven't done some like sit down journal writing for a while I've I've been kind of doing spreads and creativity and writing and um, it's been very nourishing this week it has so that the um, the main premise uh, or, or essence I guess you can say um, sorry about the light of what this week was about was um, looking at how do I like to create and oh my gosh I'm gonna like just turn this way that's gonna like maybe not maybe we'll just have to deal with the um the sunlight sorry guys it's actually hang on one sec let's see if this works that's better okay um yeah so we're, we're like we were looking at um how do you how do you like to create how do i like to create and uh, my intention for this full moon month itself was uh, to create heart with words and so the um, the words that she sort of used this this week were activate stimulate and absorb and um, I definitely really channeled those energies this week in terms of uh, some of the things that she talks about is working with energy uh, animals water plants and um, and herbs and for me that was one of my one of my goals as well with my intentions around this new moon cycle itself from you know moon, new moon to new moon was to start working with herbs oh my god I just realized I have soup on my lips let's just pretend that's not there I'm really like um <laughs> moving on <laughs> I've got my root root chakra soup all over my lips um yeah so it's it's it has been um about like capping into that herbs and i've been wanting to do some work with herbs for years and i'm talking like years and never really knowing what i wanted to do with it it wasn't until i did some sigil work this week and really working with a certain sigil um that i tapped into the herbs that i really enjoy using i've always um work with mugwort I guess in, in a way I have been working with herbs um, and mint. I love mint. Mint's like my fave. Peppermint, spearmint. Oh, you can just grow me a mint garden. Uh, so it has been something that I've been using mugwort for, like, you know, combining mint with mugwort before. And I used it last year and I had a video about it, I think. Yes, I did. And I used it for dreaming and sort of tapping into, like, my flow again. And then I realised you're not supposed to drink so much of it, so my liver's probably like wiped out a little bit, but that's okay. Uh, so I decided to use some herbs this week, and I, I didn't actually intend to buy them in person. I had a list that I made up to go with this because I kind of really sunk into how did I want to feel. And this is where the design map has been really helping me channel that 
like how do I want to feel and when I convey messages how do I want other people to feel not in a dictating way but how would I imagine if I was on the other end of the of the um, communication line how would I want to feel and when I'm working with just myself I'm always asking my creativity you know how do I want to feel when I've created this piece instead of I want to create this and this is what the end goal is going to be and just shifting that perspective again this week has been really incredible for actually manifesting what I want to create um, I don't think I've really ever struggled with the concept of creating um, and I've really come into understanding that I don't really need to have a business or I don't need to have a particular um, you know a medal or a badge to tell me what I am doing uh, it, it, it really has come back down to feeling what I need to create and feeling what needs to be birthed through me and the waxing moon was really great for birthing those intentions so I made a list of um, herbs that I wanted to use and I because I wanted to create a um, releasing your story uh, tincture and uh, tea and essence and things like that and then when I went to the esoteric bookshop which is in Melbourne with my mum we had a day trip and we went to this place that was like a cottage it was somebody's house so they'd, they'd have a shop as well like they turned it into a shop as well and I went there with the intention of getting some crystals but this whole shop was like massively full of herbs so I was like destined to go there because they had every herb that I could possibly imagine and I ended up picking up a lot of tree herbs because for me I realized in my meditation that I did a few weeks back where I connected with uh, a like a tree being in my meditation I think I was working with um, the ghost and spirits tarot when that that sort of meditation happened yeah it was a four, a four of winds four of um, wands and I met this tree being and ever since then I have really connected with the Ogham because I've always wanted to work with the Ogham as well um, as soon as I sort of found my Celtic Pantheon the Ogham was something that kept that kept calling to me as well and of course you know um, a few guys have watched Joey Morris she is like the queen of the Ogham <laughs> so I've definitely had a lot of inspiration from her and a lot of confidence I guess in in knowing that you know it's really about what you make of that experience it's really about what you make and connect with that that system and everything like that so it's been a really fantastic week for me to connect with the birch because that's what came up that's what I needed and I actually do have a book I don't have it with me right now but I have a book on Celtic tree magic um, and I also have a couple on my Kindle which I kind of read here and there because they're kind of progressive books and so that's what I've been working uh, with this this week to manifest and I've also done some other creative projects as well I made my sigil my hand sigil which you can find on uh, my Instagram you can find my other creative stuff on Instagram as well and I made the sigil for my story I'm not going to show that obviously but um, you can see my hands um, the the foundation I built the foundation for my practice of sigil magic for the rest of my life now because it's something that I I, I am going to deepen and deepen and deepen as well and it's it's come at a really great time with the waxing because it was all about activating and stimulating that energy and um, creating that sigil and I, I realized I had a sigil in my story already so in regards to my novel and the story world that I'm working with I created a sigil um, that was already in there so that it was a physical rep representation of um, what was already on the astral and I believe you know stories live on the astral so it was a physical rep representation of that in my story and in the physical so when I work on that and I activate that with my hand on my hand um, foundation thingy it's going to connect me with that story and the um, creatures and the beings in it so I really discovered a lot about um, that aspect of creativity as well and sort of tapping into it and it's been interesting because this week was about inner child work and maiden work and I feel like I mean I was lying in my bed and I made a dream pouch as well which is kind of like a little um, little purse satchel thing that I made to take with me in my dreamscape world 
um, it has a few things in it like um, some herbs, some crystals, um, my oak wand that I made and what else? Oh yeah and I put some of the um, Book of Shadows tarot in there because it actually really worked quite well with me like putting that um, into my dreams rather than writing on them which I was doing quite okay with like I just had to figure out what that deck was kind of better for I did a few writing exercises with that deck and then it just sort of yeah um, so that again was about activating and stimulating and keeping that energy flowing uh, and that's that was really uh, helpful for me so creating those different things as well so I was lying there and I was thinking you know I, I feel like I'm back to I felt like I was a little bit I'm um, back to being a child again because for me as a child I would always sort of be creating things and keeping them in my bed or my bedroom I had you know art journals full of clippings from magazines um, drawings I remember this one time and I think I've mentioned it before but I'll mention it again where um, I went to a birthday party a McDonald's birthday party and they were handing out these blow up um, crocodiles and for me I took it home and everyone else is like yeah okay that's fine it's just a piece of shit like you know it's just a, a McDonald's crocodile thing it's gonna take a sip of this coffee and then I took it home and I just worked the shit out of that crocodile it was like my best friend I took it everywhere I wrote stories about it I drew it I kept it in my bed um, and in a way it kind of feels funny because there's so many um, similarities between that crocodile, like the crocodile, like the scales and and the and the and the energy of the crocodile that seems to have manifested as well in some of my beings and my stories as well. So it's, I think these things have power, and it, this week it's really connected me with my inner child. Um, again, like I used to make um, board games out of the books that I used to read, so I. <laughs> I was quite obsessed with Anne Frank and I still am and I ended up making a Anne Frank board game with a piece of A4 paper so um, I love my childhood I, I had some pain and a lot of that pain has come up as this week as well with nostalgia like I drew the nostalgia card in the guitar of the sheet and you know facing that maiden um, and fa facing that um, child within me the inner child I got taken back to the place when I was six and a lot of stuff happened when I was six. Um, I had my first sort of, uh, you could say ET contact, I guess, for me personally, my belief, <laughs> you know, my experience. I always feel like I have to say that. I'm just going to stop doing that. But um, yeah, I had that experience when I was six. I had an experience where I had my first male abusive situation where you know, I was a kid and this 10 year old boy who was my neighbor ended up like backing me against the fence and choking me so that came up as well which is it's come up a little bit but and I was able to write about that and make art from that feeling that essence and I think this is the important thing about doing things like when you're you're tapping into your flow it is about confronting these critical moments in your life these experiences at that time your inner child's like screaming for you to actually confront them and being able to hold that space and I felt like this week was about holding that space for those those traumatic things as well as the as well as the good things too I had some great experiences as well like I met some fantastic friends when I was six years old I had a really fantastic male friend and it kind of felt like it, it, I kind of realized where the beginnings of fractures inside me had started from that age and it was incredibly healing this week um, I've always loved trees I've always loved nature I used to go to the parks and read underneath the trees I used to hug the trees one of my favorite spots I remember in high school especially when I started to realize that sort of traditional school was not going to be for me and I was kind of in a stage where I was coming out, coming into my skin, coming into who I, who I was, and it just nothing resonated with me. Nothing that I was learning or gaining or experiencing was resonating with me. And I remember sitting under this tree at school, and I, I skipped classes. It was terrible, <laughs> but I'd sit underneath this tree, and I'd watch the cars go by, and I, I just felt at home. I felt like I could be. I, I felt like I was loved and surrounded by this beautiful energy that was holding that sacred space and allowing me to grieve what I was going through in my family life and my personal life and 
all my French uh, friends just sort of um, leaving and that sort of stuff. Um, it was a very traumatic time. And so that was, you know, fast forward 6 to 16 and, and, and all that sort of stuff. So it was really interesting as well. And again, this week with, with coming with that shadow work is I've had to deal with the... Um, I've always ever... Well, I've always only ever had a cu like a couple of friends and a lot of the friends that I have had have always been overseas or um, in different states or whatnot. I have a few friends that are actually like physically in my state, in, in my city. Um, and those are my, th those are my family, like they are part of my family. So it's been a really beautiful experience to realize that, you know, sometimes in life we find the friendships in in distance, in distance, and you know, I struggled a lot as a teenager to find really um, healthy relationships with friends as well, female friends. Like I just didn't, I just didn't res like resonate with the competitiveness. I didn't resonate with the um, underhandedness of friendship. I always felt like, you know, females and males should be, or could be, in a sisterhood, brotherhood relationship, and I, I never saw that. So I, I only reflected that and experienced that and coming into these communities and and really um opening up on youtube as well has it has allowed me to um be worthy of that and accept that and embrace that and share the knowledge that i have and share what i've been creating share things like this course as well and i think that's the most healing thing that anyone can experience when they connect with people that are kindred tribe and i feel like that's another thing as well that i'm healing with my my maiden and my inner child because my maiden years um and i'm still a maiden technically <laughs> um, but my earlier child adolescent years were very traumatic and as, as well as like my my older my older 20s i'm 25 now so yeah but um that beautiful that beautiful realization that all that shadow that all that shadow positive and negative um becomes neutral as well once you start healing it it becomes part of who you are and who you've been made and that has power like and I was a creative person back then a fully creative person I'm coming back into that and the waxing moon has taught me a lot about my creativity and how I create and what I want to create and how I like to tap into that inner child who loves to just make things um, for no purpose or for purpose it's just been a really incredible week for that I also thought that I would um, show you a couple of things that I got this week. Uh, so one of the things I've been working on as well to manifest and create is an e-zine or e-zine, like for me. Um, I'm not quite sure if I'm ready to sort of talk too much about it, but I'm working on it. Um, it's kind of a creative, like a slow creative process because I'm sort of, you know, not really, I have never made an e-zine before. Um, but it, it worked out synchronistically because I just got my assignment and I have to create a magazine like from Marketing to everything so it was very <laughs> synchronistic. I was like, well, you know what? This is gonna be really well because it's just something I'm already starting to work on so I can sort of integrate that into my um, University assignment. So that was, that's been really helpful and in doing that I decided that because I'd already started like uh, mapping out working on it. I've done a few um, pages and posts and I thought mm, maybe I should go looking for some e-zines because I I've read a few from Melbourne but I would like to see some from around the world as well so I picked up uh, Clementine Morrigan's and Jeff make all good things fall apart it's a beautiful e-zine I'll see if I can find the link below so if you want to purchase it or purchase her e-zines I just thought I'd have a, have a check it out and then if I like it probably buy some of her other ones as well um, in particular I got this one because there was a passage a topic rather um, she talks about her recovery and oh god I can't find it now recovery and it was about mental health. Oh, sorry. On madness, trauma, and triggers. So that really resonated me with me because I, I kind of purchased it about two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago when I started doing some investigation on... Jesus, there's coffee everywhere. Um, 
on the e-zine so and I wanted to pick a pick an e-zine to start with that was really resonating with what I was going through as well with my recovery and the trauma and triggers and shadow and all that sort of stuff that comes with um, addictions and whatnot so and I love Clementine Morrigan I just love her I love her she's just beautiful beautiful soul so honest and raw and so I picked up that and also the lovely Joanna who I will link below uh, she sent me the, the decks that we were going to go for swapping in um, again I, I think I've only got two more decks coming in the mail and that's it that is it for me um, I've got the connected and free which I'm hoping comes this week because I'm really starting to get worried because it was sent out Monday um, and I've got the first the first light tarot which is basically like um, a cosmic tarot I'll show you guys when I get it all well, it'll be on Instagram actually I won't do it I'll, I'll show you the deck when I've actually worked with it <laughs> uh, so I got the um, wildwood and I chopped this up last night chop 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 I'm loving it loving it and oh my gosh oh my god and it's different from the wilds um not the wild unknown the druid craft i like that it's uh, the, the style is similar but it's not at the same time it's yeah it's much more sharp i think like it's i don't know how to describe it but it's a lot more sharp and so i've got that to work with which i'm really excited started to read the book before and then I love these pouches that Joanna makes they're just so cute aren't they they're just adorable I also love the feel of this one like I just oh it's perfect for the deck too it just has that energy yes I'm making out with the bag um and then I got the fantastical creatures tarot because I did, I have had this on my wish list for a while and Joanna said she had it and I've been speaking with um, the Bar's Lament storytelling tea and tarot I love her, I love her so much kindred, kindred hearts um, and so she was talking about this deck as well recently and I was like yep, you know what, I'm going to swap this I'm going to swap for the Japaderice I swapped Joanna the Japaderice, not mine, oh god no way I am swapping my copy <laughs> um, I purchased her a copy rather and in exchange for these two decks and I was like hell yeah I'll do that because these have been on my wish list forever and the funny thing about that is that the um, wild wood deck was the other deck that I was thinking of getting when I actually got went and purchased the Japadori so it was kind of funny that she sent me the wild wood and um, I sent her the Japadori so it was just like hilarious so it was a little bit of a ramble a little bit of actual extra information probably but um we'll go with that uh, i thank you for watching i hope you have had a great week this has been my week with the cmp and my discoveries and uncoverings um i will talk to you guys later hopefully next video i will not have soup and coffee all over my lips before i make a video but you know yolo you only live once right <laughs> bye guys